Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to build your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for better party banter next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Colonel James Rhodes, also known as Rhodey or The War Machine. This isn't going to be the Iron Man reboot build people have been asking for. Rhodey is a totally different guy with a totally different set of skills. This will use that new armorer subclass though, so if you wanted to see that, I guess all I gotta say is, boom. You looking for this? Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need a suit, but no tie. When you're at a party, it ain't a scene, it's a gosh darn arms race. Speaking of, we need to be armed to the teeth. Seriously, I think War Machine has a couple of bullets in the jaw plate of the armor. Finally, we need the Cubans, baby. The Cohibas, the Monte Cristos. We need a kinetic kill Sidewinder vehicle with a secondary cycle trimethylene trinitramine RDX burst. It's gotta be capable of busting the bunker under the bunker you just busted. If it were any smarter, it would write a book, a book that would make Ulysses look like it was written in crayon. And it would read it to you. It's the Eiffel Tower, it's Rachmaninoff's third, it's the Pieta. It is completely elegant, bafflingly beautiful, and it's capable of reducing the population of any standing structure to zero. I call it the ex-wife. Joe Crap calls it a fireball. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you like, just keep your intelligence and dexterity high. Intelligence will be number one. Flying planes is a heck of a thing, and we're also only 12 pilots away from a decent alt-rock band. I'm kind of excited about that. Dexterity next, you aim while zooming around at jet speed. That's impressive. Constitution after that, even outside of the armor, you're able to take a hit or two. Follow that up with wisdom. I think if the modifier isn't positive, they don't let you fly planes and you have a breakdown in a family van on the way to your little sister's pageant. Little Miss Sunshine build when, honestly. Strength is a bit low, you're in good shape, we just don't need it, and we'll dump charisma. Rewatching the movies, I realize that Rhodey is a buzzkill at parties, probably why he has to ride in the humdrum V. Rhodey is a human, I guess he could be a warforged, except those are robots who fuse with armors, not humans who get into armor, or trees who just have nothing to do with a warforged, other than yes, warforged can be made of wood. Pizza can be on a bagel, that doesn't mean you serve bagel bites at an Italian restaurant. <coughs> Variant humans get a feat, the Heavy Armor Master feat reduces damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing attacks by three while you're wearing heavy armor. You do need heavy armor proficiency to get this feat, but we'll have that, don't worry. It also buffs your strength score by one, but we don't need it. It's not like we're going to be wearing heavy armor. Wait, we are. That's fine. Bump your constitution and your intelligence with your two free points, take investigation for your skill of choice, and the sailor background for athletics and perception skills. Yes, Rhodey is a soldier, but he's also a pilot, and he's never really intimidated anyone successfully. It's Don Cheadle's fault, really. The dude just sends out good vibes. We'll kick things off as a fighter for a heavy armor proficiency, but you also get two skills from the fighter list. History and insight are on the fighter list, even though we rarely grab them from fighter. I guess not everybody needs athletics and intimidation. You get a fighting style. Defense is tempting for a plus one bonus to your AC, but trust me, we're going to have enough armor later. Instead, grab archery for plus two to your attack rolls with ranged weapons, making you more accurate. I'm going with this to highlight the difference between Tony and Rhodey. Tony gives himself the better gear, but Rhodey can actually get things done without a suit or a six-hour montage of MacGyvering. You also get Second Wind, letting you recover 1d10, plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest for a little military resolve. Bouncing over to Artificer now, we could have started here if they got heavy armor at level 1, but they don't. Oblady, oblada, life goes on. Artificers get Magical Tinkering, letting you make a tiny item, play a recorded message, create a puff of smoke or smell, nothing that deals damage, but small sensory effects that can be fun for flavor. Artificers get spells at level 1, even though they're a half-caster because they're weird and quirky, so random, XD. For Cantrips, Firebolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 fire damage for a little fireball. Two downtown, I agree. Thunderclap forces a constitution saving throw on creatures within five feet of you, dealing 1d6 thunder damage to those that fail. You know what? You're not a hunter. What am I talking about? For first level spells, Catapult launches an object weighing five pounds or less at a creature. Failing a deck save, they'll take 3d8 bludgeoning damage. But I can tell, that's not disco enough for you. I'll just put it right here. Featherfall reduces the falling damage for up to five falling creatures as a reaction. That's not an Iron Man 2 reference, you just need a parachute. Also, y'all are sleeping on Iron Man 2. It's got the War Machine versus Iron Man Rock'em Sock'em Robot fight. It's got Sam Rockwell. It's got the Terrarium fight. Sure, there isn't as much action in the movie as you might expect from an action movie, but the dialogue is crisp as ever and being delivered by a stellar cast 
Whiplash is kind of a lame villain, I'll give you that. Second level artificers get infusions, four fancy options to make your armor a little cooler even if you can only have two ready at the end of a long rest. Enhanced Defense gives a piece of armor or a shield plus one to AC for something a little more heavy duty. Repeating Shot removes the loading property from a weapon, gives it plus one to attack and damage rolls, and unlimited ammo. It's really good and basically means we're never going to have to take the crossbow expert feat which will save us an ability score improvement. Enhanced Arcane Focus gives an Arcane Focus plus one to spell attack rolls and the ability to ignore half cover with spell attacks for better fire bolting. Finally, Goggles of Night is always useful for humans, giving you 60 feet of dark vision in case you have to pull the night shift. Third level artificers can choose a specialty. The new armorer is perfect for people who get in big robot suits. You get power armor, which lets you ignore strength requirements for heavy armor. You can use heavy armor as a spell casting focus, and you can't get pulled out of the armor unless you're willing. I don't think this makes you immune to something like heat metal. So if someone turns your suit into a toaster, getting out of it would be your choice because you don't want to be toast. You can pick an armor model for your power armor. A guardian model is heavier, so I'd go for that. It has thunder gauntlets, which are melee weapons that use your intelligence modifier for attack and damage rolls and deal 1d8 thunder damage on a hit, also giving the target disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures that aren't you until your turn starts again. It also has a defensive field, which lets you give yourself temporary HP equal to your artificer level as a bonus action on each of your turns. Pairing this with your 19 AC from the enhanced defense, you're gonna be pretty bulky. And actually, you can wear a shield since you're casting with your armor anyway, so 21 AC or 26 with the shield spell since you get that from armorer. It adds 5 to your AC as a reaction until the start of your next turn. You got limited spell slots at the moment, but we'll get more later. You also get Magic Missile, which shoots 3 darts that deal 1d4 plus 1 force damage and automatically hit a target unless they've used the shield spell. A little homing shot can be useful when you're flying super fast, which we'll do soon. I promise. Fourth level artificers get an ability score improvement, bump your intelligence for harder spell saves and better thunder punches, though it would be great if we could punch twice. Fifth level armorers get extra attack, letting you punch twice instead of once with an action for a little rock'em and sock'em. You can also scoop up second level spells like Shatter, which forces a constitution saving throw in a 10 foot radius sphere, dealing 3d8 thunder damage to those that fail for a little sonic cannon. And by a little sonic cannon, I mean a pretty big sonic cannon. Sixth level artificers get tool expertise, doubling your proficiency with tools you are proficient with. You also get two more infusions and some new options open up as well. Spell Refueling Ring is from the same Unearthed Arcana that the Armorer Artificer is. It lets you recover a spell slot as an action once per day. The spell can be of a level equal to the amount of items you have attuned. Currently three, but you've only got second level slots, so second level, that's your limit. Mind Sharpener lets you use your reaction to succeed on concentration saves when you would have failed, which is pretty important if you don't want a cannonball to the ground while you're flying, which, again, we'll get to fly it's just a third level spell so we need to either take five levels of a main caster class but we also needed three levels of artificer to get the power armor so that means that level eight would have been the fastest we could possibly fly so we might as well just wait till artificer level 10 because those levels would be much better for you at the moment seventh level artificers get flash of genius letting you add your intelligence modifier to an ability check or saving throw of yourself or an ally within 30 feet of you as a reaction an amount of times equal to your intelligence modifier per long rest sometimes you need to be the wingman Top Gun, Danger Zone. It's a, that's a, that's a movie about pilots pilot movie. Eighth level artificers get another ability score improvement. Cap off that intelligence modifier. You use it for a bunch of stuff. Big brain plays. Get them going. Ninth level artificers get third level spells so we can finally learn fly, but we won't because power building. If I can flavor something and make the build good, why wouldn't I do that? So to be better, haste doubles a creature's movement speed, gives them plus two to their AC, advantage on dexterity saves, and an extra action per turn for a minute depending on your concentration. So 23 AC for you with 28 after a shield spell and three punches per round because the extra special action from haste doesn't give you an extra extra attack it just adds one more watch out if you lose concentration because you won't be able to take actions or reactions for a round if only you had a way to automatically succeed on your concentration saves Oh wait, you do. Armorers also get armor modifications at this level, breaking your power armor into four pieces that you can infuse, and you can infuse two more items per long rest, which is pretty busted. Artificers are already pretty busted, and this is even more busted. 10th level artificers get magical item adept, letting you tune up to four magical items at once, but the big benefit here is more infusions, like winged boots, which give you a flying speed equal to your normal speed for four hours a day, spending one minute at a time for over 2,000 rounds of flight per charge, 
damage and they fully recharge after 24 hours of inactivity. This lets you fly without concentration so you can have haste up at the same time, meaning better AC and more punches. Armor of Magical Strength is from that Unearthed Arcana that the Armorer or Artificer is from. It lets you use your Intelligence modifier for Strength checks and saves. And ignore any effect that would make you fall prone four times per day, meaning that we didn't have to invest in Strength Hooray. This level also bumps up your enhanced item infusion bonuses to plus two instead of plus one. Now let's get some more artillery by dipping into wizard. First level wizards can learn six spells, but can only have an amount of spells prepared equal to your wizard level plus your intelligence modifier per long rest, which is also six. Burning Hands creates a cone of fire that forces a dexterity save on creatures in a 15 foot cone, dealing 3d6 fire damage to those that fail for a little flamethrower. Fog Cloud makes a smoke cloud in a 20 foot radius sphere to heavily obscure an area for up to an hour or until it's dispersed with a moderate wind if you need to get away. Thunder Wave forces a constitution save on creatures in a 15 foot cube, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet for another sonic cannon. Long Strider increases a target's movement speed by 10 feet for an hour if you want to fly a little bit faster. Expeditious Retreat lets you dash as a bonus action for 10 minutes depending on your concentration, which isn't as good as haste, but it also doesn't use up a third level spell slot if you just need to get away. Jump triples a targets jump distance i guess we already have a lot of spells from artificer but war machine can jump pretty good for your cantrips create bonfire deals 3d8 fire damage to creatures that fail a dexterity save in a five foot radius for a little area of fire that you could also huddle around if you wanted to just you know hang out shocking grasp is a melee spell attack that deals 3d8 lightning damage to a creature and prevents them from taking reactions for a little taser message lets you communicate with someone up to 120 feet away and they can talk back that should make it easier to understand you through the faceplate we're multi-classing spellcasters here. Check out page 165 of the player's handbook to figure out how many spells you have at any given level. And keep in mind, Artificer is a half-caster like a ranger or a paladin. Second level wizards can choose a school or skip it and be a war mage. War mages get tactical wit, letting you add your intelligence modifier to your initiative rolls. You also get arcane deflection, letting you add two to your AC as a reaction when you're hit or plus four to a saving throw. Either way, you can only use cantrips until the end of your next turn as you divert all power to main shields. I'll do Star Trek someday. I've just, uh, I've never watched it. Other than the J.J. Abrams ones, and people tell me those are bad, so makes it kind of hard for me to make those builds. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Scorching Ray lets you throw three fireballs that deal 2d6 fire damage each, either to one target or to multiple, so you can work on your crowd control. Fourth level wizards get an ability score improvement. Bump your dexterity for more accurate and deadly guns. We really haven't gotten enough guns. We'll get some more. Don't worry for this level spell. Dark Vision gives you 60 feet of Dark Vision for 8 hours so you don't have to waste your infusions on Goggles of Night. 5th level Wizards can finally get Fireball with the spell Fireball, which forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail. Unlike Hammer Tech, this actually works, unless you're aiming for a rogue, then it, uh, then probably not. Probably doesn't. Actually, sixth level war mages get power surge, letting you deal extra force damage with a damaging spell attack equal to half your wizard level. You get one of these per short rest and can get more by shutting down spells with counter spell, which shuts down spells of third level or lower as a reaction and higher level spells with an intelligence check of 10 plus the spells level. You could even use your reaction for a flash of genius to basically add your intelligence modifier to that check twice. So 10 plus whatever you're rolling. That means that you're shutting down ninth level spells more than half the time. This is a good build roadie is a good dude seventh level wizards can learn fourth level spells wall of fire creates a wall of fire that's 20 feet high and 60 feet long or a ringed wall 20 feet in diameter that deals 5d8 fire damage to creatures that fail a dexterity saving throw inside then another 5d8 fire damage to creatures within 10 feet of a side of a wall of your choosing for a big old carpet bomb that lasts for a minute depending on your concentration eighth level wizards get an ability score improvement or a feat i'll actually grab these sharpshooter feet to fire ranged weapons at max range without disadvantage ignore all but full cover and get the ability to take a negative five penalty to your attack roll to deal an extra 10 damage with your attacks your dexterity isn't the greatest but thanks to repeating shot and archery your attack roll is still plus six after that penalty like i said earlier roadie doesn't need the armor to be good but if he doesn't have it a sidearm is probably helpful this level spell stone skin gives you resistance to bludgeoning piercing and slashing damage for an hour depending on your concentration if you want even thicker armor We'll actually cap off this build with one more level of fighter for action surge, letting you make two actions in a turn once per short rest, letting you mix in three punches with haste and a fireball in the same turn. Your war machine, not tickle machine. 
Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're a tank with heavy armor, a shield, a shield spell, enhanced armor and haste. Your AC is 29. With a bunch of saving throw bonuses from Flash of Genius, you're hard to hit. You're also loaded with firepower, with literal fire, and magical crossbow bolts from repeating shot if they're being a little too evasive. Finally, you're very mobile with a flying speed and extra speed from haste. For weaknesses, you yeah, almost have too many options. Flash of Genius, Shield, Arcane Deflection, and Mind Sharpener are all reactions, not even counting opportunity attacks. Your charisma is also low, so getting your way could be an issue. Finally, even though you're better than Tony without your armor, you're still pretty dependent on it, so heat metal could be an issue. But if one specific spell is your weakness, you're a solid fighter. Fly around, blast the ground, and don't even sweat the hits they're trying to to make you take. Just make sure you're up on your military strategy or a vision of the future could clip your wings. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, we make two builds every week, but for a couple weeks here, we're going to make three builds every week. So come back on Saturdays. Next week, we're going to be doing Baptiste from Overwatch.